I love you. Welcome back to the Couch Potatoes, to a riveting, exciting, uh, super empowering, fantabulistic, fun genre smackdown. Bom. I am the Green Traveler from Gorge. Bom, bom. And I am uh, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Faceless Leon. Uh, so I was like, we couldn't get the faceless Leon here today, so <laughs> we got a guy named Blake. It's just this guy <laughs> named Blake. Found him on the streets, dragged him in. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a movie oh, podcast. Geez. If if you couldn't tell, and uh, we also talk about TV here. This is green and faceless on the couch. Sometimes, sometimes we will. Woo-hoo! There's some things. That's us. I'm green. He's faceless. We're on a couch. Not really, but so to speak. I'm on a chair. We're here to talk about some movies. It's a comfy chair. Yeah, I'm on a chair too. Mine's okay. Yeah. It's not the greatest. It's old. (laughs) Like me. (laughs) I do feel old. Dear God. I feel old after watching these movies. Yeah. We're here to talk about (laughs) a couple action thrillers. That was the, that was the, 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 like, we were trying to fill our schedule. I was like, hey, there's some new movies out that we can make an act- or a genre smackdown out of because they were billed as action thrillers. Right. I know that's pretty broad, but yes. that's what I was going with. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> they were both st- uh, streaming. That was another nice thing. We didn't have to pay too much money for it. Right. We didn't have to pay any money, actually, except for our yeah. our subscription fees. Right, right. Um, were they both on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah, they were neighbors. Yeah, and Gray Man is a Netflix movie. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yes. Right? Gray Man, right. though I am kind of, I do feel like it could have done okay in theaters. Maybe I don't know. It really could have. Uh, theaters, though. Well, just because of the name value, I think it could work. But I have heard. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember who said it. Might even have been Chris Evans. Uh, somebody said something to the effect that theaters have gone to the way of Marvel and. Something else. I don't remember. I'm bad at this right. show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that is pretty much the only things that do well anymore are dumb, turn-your-brain-off actions. Yeah. Like, people tune that go out in, like, droves to see those films. I saw a movie this weekend called Pearl. It's a pretty much independent uh, horror film. Uh, directed by Ty West. I'll talk about it in Bangers and Hash. If you want to hear that, go to patreon.com slash green and faceless. Check out the tiers. You have an uh, exclusive episode called Bangers and Hash. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, nobody's probably seeing that film. Not that many people. <laughs> I mean, I went at a very exclusive time at a very weird day. Uh-huh. So, you know, I'm not surprised, but there was only four people in the audience, uh, including myself. So, you know, me and three other people. Right. And... I was the only one who seemed impressed by it because people <laughs> don't want that shit. They don't want artsy fartsy. They want, you know, mindless action. And <laughs> they who probably am I to say? wanted I, more I, I boobs dislike in it. their in their porn uh, themed horror movie. That is, yeah. I think I think one of them was definitely there for boobs and did not get boobs and was very upset by that. I see. I see. That could That's be. That's my upsetting. assumption. Based off of his reaction. <laughs> My favorite reaction was this one lady who was just like, she was frozen. I, I'll talk about it on Bangers and Hash. Yeah, I'll talk yeah, about okay, Bangers right, and right, Hash. Right. Let's yeah, talk sorry about these tease. movies. Uh, you know, when we were talking yeah. about James Bond here recently, Octopussy, yeah. uh, we were having trouble remembering. And Rawr. I was like, wow, you know, now that you say I'm having trouble remembering all three movies that we decided to talk about today. Well, we didn't decide to talk about them all <laughs> on the same day because. Uh, yeah, it was a long day. Yeah, it was a long day. It was a long week is what it was. And I needed rest. That's true, too. But we're rested. We're rested. We're rested. We're ready. And I'm still struggling to remember one of these films. Yeah. And uh, let's go ahead and I'll toss that go. one under the bus first. I mean, I say we're tossing it under the bus. It's not a bad film. I, I will say right. that it's not bad. It's it's pretty it's pretty entertaining. But uh, it's the Gray Man. The Gray we're talking man. about it. Uh, not the you green mentioned man. name value. Uh, not even going into the cast list alone, you get name value off of the very 
director and screenwriters. You have the Russo brothers back right. again. Anthony and Joe Russo brought us Captain America, I don't know, 2, Captain America Civil War, Avengers Endgame, Avengers yeah. Infinity War, like all these big budgeted movies. Huge, makes a crap ton of money. These guys are cinema gold in regards to blockbusters, right? And then your, your screenplay, written by Joe Russo, along with the, the duo Christopher, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, who brought us pretty much all of the exact same films that I just talked about. Like, these guys together are all, like, a really good creative group. Team, yeah. And they made a... Yeah, they team. That's a good one. Yeah. And they made a, a, a spy film. A CIA action thriller beat them up. Yeah, it's based ah. off of a <laughs> novel uh, by Mark uh, Grain, Grainy. Greeny, maybe? It might be Greeny. My apologies. Greeny. Hi. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I actually wrote the novel. It's my <laughs> it's my sidekick. <laughs> Don't. It's my, you it's can't my claim pseudonym. that. Don't get sued. <laughs> You're right. I did not write the novel. That was a joke. <laughs> that was a, hold up a court, very right? good that'll joke. Get, that'll clear me of all charges. It was a very good joke, and you laughed at it at home. No, they didn't. This movie... <laughs> Uh, stars so here's the names I was talking about stars Ryan Gosling as Six Chris yes. Evans as Lloyd Hansen uh, Anna de Armas who uh, co-starred with Chris Evans in Knives Out uh, and she That's plays right. in this movie Danny Miranda who is kind of uh, Six's handler I'd say and then right. uh, Billy Bob Thornton. And it's also kind of funny. As Fitzroy. Oh, yeah. Billy Bob was in that. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. So those are the, your big name draws in this. And Jessica Henwick's pretty big nowadays, too. She's she? getting much bigger. Oh. I know she's in Star Wars or something. She's in The Force Awakens. That was it. Brought her face. What is the big up. one? That, where do we know her from? Colleen. She was Colleen in Iron Fist. Colleen. That was Wing. the big one. Okay. Well, she had you a. Remember, yeah, she's the best part of that bad show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. She's also in Game of Thrones. I haven't watched that, though. Okay. She played Suzanne. Okay. So Suzanne has her hair shorter and much lighter than I'm used to seeing jessica henwick with yeah but i know we talked about right. her with something though i feel like uh the matrix resurrection that's what I it was that too. bugs right yep yeah that's right bugs all right God, i forgot about that name i like jessica henwick she's she seems like she's blossoming yeah and uh she has she she is perpendicular or parallel or what she's in the same scene as the funniest scene in this whole movie it's not her that makes it funny it's Chris Evans, but my God, I love it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it is like the most memorable scene. So I, I think we could talk about it without it really even is. getting into the film. That's true. I mean, he just he's just walking funny, right? And she asks him literally. She just you know she's just like, "Why are you walking like that, Lloyd?" And he's like, "Cause I got shot in the ass, Suzanne." <laughs> While he's walking away, it's perfect. Uh, oh my god, I love Chris <clears throat> Evans in this. Yeah, Chris Evans uh, does a really good job of playing sociopath. Yeah. Yeah, this character works. It's really fun. Yeah. Uh, and Six, uh, it, you know, they have, because they're both skilled, have mirroring qualities. But they right. they face off in this movie. That's kind of the whole thing. But that's not the synopsis. That's like, I don't know. I don't know what you would call that. I mean, it that. technically is the synopsis. <laughs> I mean, maybe the log line. <laughs> yeah, Chris Evans versus Ryan Gosling in Grey Man. That's how they would, yeah. Okay, well, anyhow. Captain America versus The Notebook. <laughs> Six is part of a secret organization called Sierra <laughs> which was at one time led by Fitzroy, Billy Bob Thornton's character, but he is now retired. Right. Given that he is retired, it has come under the management of Suzanne Brewer, who we talked about as Henwick's character, 
but her boss who's giving her commands for Sierra is Carmackle, played by uh, Reggae Jean Page. He is the man behind the glass in the command room. Right. Yeah, so that the people that are running the computers and stuff can't even see him, but they see Suzanne. And, but he's the man behind the glass, call, call, secretly calling the shots. He sends Six out on a mission that uh, he's actually goes out to kill another Sierra member. I think it's four. And uh, he kills him. Swipes a locket off of him because four was like, they're just going to send somebody after you now. And, um, right. so, and he goes on the run, uh, with a little bit of help from Fitzroy. Danny had no idea what was going on being, uh, Arm, Armaz's character. So she reports in and gets reprimanded and made a suspect as an accomplice with six and since that happened, she went ahead and went and found Six and started helping him. Meanwhile, uh, Carmichael's pissed that Six has this locket, even though he has no real confirmation of that, uh, because it has a flash drive in it. That's what he really wants. Uh, but he's pissed about that, so he hires his college buddy, who has a, uh, <laughs> a government contract business, Basically, does mercenary work for the for the government, and but he yeah. he has absolutely no ethics at all. Like he was kicked out of the CIA yeah. for uh, unsanctioned torture and shit like that. And uh, that's yeah, Chris he, Evans. He didn't character. pass their sociopath test. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> he is a sociopath. And um, Suzanne also went to school with them, which you actually find out much later in the film. Which I don't know why they keep that <laughs> right. secret. It's not like a big reveal or anything. But um, <clears throat> she is always upset that Carmichael brings Lloyd into things because she doesn't like working with him because he's freaking not stable. <laughs> no, yeah, he's fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, she's warning. She, she's warning Carmichael the whole way. She's like, "You gotta stop this. Like, don't go this far." Right. Oh. So she sends Lloyd after yeah. him. After six, Fitzroy's niece gets involved, and uh, I believe that's Claire, played by Julia Butters. I feel like we talked about her in something, but maybe nothing. That name definitely sounds familiar, Butters. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. She's been doing some TV stuff, it looks like. Oh, uh, Once Upon, a time, Once upon a time in Hollywood. She must have been a kid in that. But. She was the, I think she's the kid that Leo has that talk with. Maybe. The oh, the actor? I bet you're right. That yeah. little actor kid? Yeah. I yeah. bet you're right. Oh, she was so great. She in that. was really good. In that. <laughs> this she's she's still pretty good in this for you know being a, a very much a side character in an action thriller. She's very good. She has very good chemistry with Six. They have. That's kind of where I want to break off and start talking about this movie, and I want to jump to the end, really, or at, at least that scene where Six goes and and finds her and picks and picks up Claire. Yeah. That that scene was kind of weird to me. <laughs> like, it, it just, I don't know what it's implying about their relationship. Like, I was good with them being like, oh, yeah, he's somebody who will protect me. But I don't know. Right. Yeah. It, like, she, I feel like she's I mean, only they really the flashback. Met him a they set everything times. up pretty well. Yeah, but I, I feel like still that he's only met her a couple times. Because he, yeah, he's been he's not that much older than than that flashback, and right. But I would say, given her uh, grandpa's or father or whatever Billy Bob Thornton is to her, given uncle. his profession and how much she knows about it, uncle, mm -hmm. I feel like she's probably met him enough to be like. This dude is safe, right? You know, he protects right. me, <laughs> right? So, like, I, I don't know. I think the, I think them meeting together at the end feels pretty good uh, yeah. because they set it up decently. But 
at the same time, I did not expect the movie to go that route. Right. To well, to go I the route like, of like now he's gonna go save this kid. Right. Yeah. And I fe- I just feel like and I feel like we really just <clears throat> got super might have spoiled the movie, but who fucking knows? It just feels like it's setting up a sequel where Claire, another Claire, gets groomed. Yeah. That's that's what it it feels like to me. Just a little bit. Yeah, they definitely could. It definitely this whole movie did kind of reek of we we have plans on doing a more in this world. Like this guy Maybe. probably hold on a second. This guy probably wrote a series of books. It's probably not just one. It's the debut novel. They made more books. It was followed by On Target. On Target, huh? Interesting. Well, interesting. Is that where Ryan Gosling oh my God. becomes a store clerk at Target so that he can support? There's twelve him books to the series, man. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> well, here's Jesus. I'd watch the sequel to this. I enjoyed watching it. Um, but well, you want me to spoil something? What? Yeah, go ahead. The budget for this movie was two hundred million dollars. The proposed box office again. It's streaming. It's right. streaming. So you know, you, it's really gray area to figure out who, how many people actually watched it and how much of the money is earned back for it. Mm-hmm. But on Wikipedia, it at least says that their box office returns was four hundred and fifty-four thousand. Oh my god! So probably so a two hundred million dollar movie. Yeah, probably won't get sequels unless they determine that it garnered enough streaming revenue i don't know i don't know how it works I don't know. it does say I, I scrolled to the bottom and uh oops i hit a button scott stuber head of original films on netflix expressed his interest in future gray man films saying we're excited to continue to partner with the russo brothers and the team at agbo as they build out the gray man universe so I guess, Universe. I guess, yeah. They announced the sequel. Okay. Wow. Well, all right. I, I, guess I, I, we'll I think I would return. It. I enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed Ryan Gosling enough. Yes. As his quiet character that he always plays. Um, you know, he That's shows true. just a little bit of emotion. You know, he smiles when he needs to smile. You know, he's a handsome guy. He could fight and but kill. But he's good at it. Like he's good at it. But I mean, like I enjoyed him, but for me, the the the, the best part of this film was Chris Evans. I love yeah. watching Chris Evans. He was so fun. Yeah, he's maniacal sociopath. Like I wouldn't like that character in real life. Hell no, no, no. Um, <laughs> it is for some people. It might be a little jarring to watch uh, uh, Captain America do these bad, evil things that this character does. But it's True. okay because he has a mustache. And tight, tight white pants. And tight, tight white pants. And he wears, like, freaking, like, boat shoes or, or loafers or something. <laughs> the whole fucking movie. It's so funny watching yeah. him fight in those. I'm like, no, come <laughs> on. <laughs> I kept I kept hoping that he would just, like, trip or something. Yeah. Uh, so, anyhow, I guess the last question for our, my interview for... Uh, you know that i'm having with you now that i just decided we're having here's my notebook and everything do you are you fringe uh, excuse me team lloyd or team six i mean i'm team of six because uh you know i took a an alignment uh quiz uh-huh. uh not too long ago a D alignment quiz right. and i landed on uh somehow i landed on lawful neutral which really surprised me it kind of uh-huh. threw me but uh i took another one to be like no it can't be i can't be lawful neutral that's bullshit that's like a dweeb <laughs> you know that's ugh. it's gross <laughs> got another lawful neutral so i guess i'm pretty much just lawful neutral and so i gotta be i got team be team six because like you know he's helping the girl out that's right uh you know he's 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 trying to do the right thing and yeah. at the same time he's willing to kill to get things done <laughs> That's true. Lawful neutral. <laughs> he might be a lawful neutral character. That might actually work for him because he only does the killing when asked upon, and it is to lessen his sentence that he was given when he was a child. I'll let you uh, get into that when you watch the movie yourself. 
But interesting backstory, <laughs> I guess. The way they put it out there isn't that great, I feel like. I feel like that scene was a little silly. Uh, where it was him and Armaz in a room. And they were talking about, you know, why why he was in prison. Ready for closing statements on it? Yeah, I don't think there's much else. So you're right. Let's do it. Closing statements. The, the last thing, yeah, the last thing I wanted to say was to talk about the pace. Mm. It's fucking breakneck, man. Like, maybe that's, like, some people seem to love those kind of films that, mm-hmm. like, never let up. But this this movie, like I, I kind of knew immediately. I was like, okay, so this is going to be like a low key spy film. Like it's not going to be like an, an actual spy film, but it's going to be right. low key spy. And then the events were just flowing into each other like super fast. Like things were just yeah. snowballing really quick. And I was like, I I can't even keep up because I haven't begun to care for any of these characters yet. Like. I'm sorry. I like I like Ryan Gosling. I like Chris uh, Chris Evans and Ana de Armas and all of them, but they didn't have enough time to like be built up as characters. And I was just supposed to care for them. And at the same time, I'm just like, I don't because I can't really tell what's happening. Sometimes the action, when the action's going on, it's good choreography, but it's kind of the camera's too close or it's it's cutting too fast. And I'm just like, and, or or the the setting's too dark. It's so like. I enjoyed it still. I think it was a fun film um, with with a decent story. Like, I could follow along. Uh, I've kind of forgotten most of it over time. But, like, as we were talking about it, it was coming back to me. But I, I can't give it more than a two and a half. Like, it's just, it's a spy film. You, yeah. you know how I am about those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, and if I rated things the way you did, I don't think I'd give it more than that anyways. Uh, I give it a face, though, because that's how I rate things. And uh, that just means exactly. it's a competent movie. But, I, you know, it's a little bit more than that. It's it's in, it's worth watching, I think. Um, but it does do what other spy movies do. But just with fun people to watch them do it, I guess. that's Yeah, that's what I'll say about it. I guess it's time for a quick soda pop break before we go on a treasure hunting journey. That's right. That's uh, my <laughs> name's Silly. Yeah, yeah. Just call me Silly. There's just this one moment. I'll talk about it when we come back. Let's go on a soda pop break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love you. Are we back? I think we are back. We're we doing this. We're doing this. Oh my god. Uncharted, the video game, now the movie. It's directed by Ruben Fleischer. Fleischer. And uh, Ruben Fleischer, I I think I've seen two of his films, but he's more recently famous for Venom. Uh, before Venom, he did the Zombieland movies. Zombieland okay. and Zombieland Double Tap. I do think I saw Gangster uh, Squad as well. What he was did it? Double Tap? I'm pretty sure that I saw Gangster Squad. Well, he was a producer on that. I like his look. At least this Wikipedia look that we got. For uh, this photo on Wikipedia. For He's wearing like a, a nice white little shirt. Some pinstripes. Well, not oh. pinstripes, but the horizontal ones. Just stripes. He's <laughs> <laughs> got an interesting hairdo. I like it. Well, all right, all right Fleischer. Let's talk about your movie. Yeah, we're going to talk about Uncharted. My thoughts going into Uncharted. I didn't watch this when it came out in theaters. I didn't even, I guess I didn't even realize it was in theaters. We had this discussion before we started recording. And I was like, was it? I thought it was just streamed, like immediately. Uh, it wasn't. It was in theaters. It did pretty well. It, it, it made like $400 million, I think. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Can it's we amazing. expect like to these. see another one? Probably. S- Everybody gets a sequel. Probably there was four you video games. You get a games. sequel. Lion King yeah, live everybody. action gets I mean, a sequel. Honestly, like again, <laughs> as I just said, it made four hundred million, and it was a budget of one hundred and twenty million. So, like, it probably will get a sequel because it made four times its yeah, money back. It's pretty good, and it's got a shit ton of. I mean, it sets up a sequel even at yeah, the end. It sure does. Um. It, it, it feels like a light, another light Pirates of the Caribbean kind of style yeah. franchise, or I guess more nat- National Treasure franchise. 
Um, yeah, it feels like if you take those and Indiana but, Jones and throw them together, as as well as Tomb Raider, you, you get oh Nathan god, Drake. yeah, got to got to add a little bit of Tomb Raider in yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I came okay, so like as I was saying, I came into this franchise through the video games back when we lived with Professor Ron Vald the Skull. That's right. Uh, we played these games a lot. And I really enjoyed the video games. I enjoyed the the voice actor that plays Nate. I really loved him. His name is Nolan North. Really good voice actor, and makes for a really good protagonist as you're following Nate. And they had Nate is a treasure hunter, who's you know he's got a bit of moral issues in regards to uh, uh what is it when you steal kleptomania? Is that what is that yeah. stealing? Yeah, when you do it compulsively, yeah. it's kleptomania. And he I don't it know if it's compulsive. I think he does it because he knows he can and that he it's can fun. make a, a buck off of what he's taking. I think he only takes what he thinks he can sell. I don't think that that's necessarily that's kleptomania. I think that is he's, making a living. He still feel, steals food, even too. Even if it's a crime. He does, yeah. but doesn't he eat the food? It, it, it is true. I understand what you're saying. I just... He's a thief. I, I'm That's just. Where it comes I, down I'm to. saying, like they they never show they never show him like doing it. Like, oh, I can't help myself. But he has a right. very good sleight of hand, and he likes to use it. Yeah, it's it's really good. Yeah, yeah. And, and and he's played by Tom Holland in the movie Spider-Man. Uh, so Tom Holland's voice nowhere near as beautiful as yeah, Spider-Man. <laughs> It's nowhere near as good as Nolan North. I love Nolan North's voice, and that's what made the games. Because the games, I was really surprised they made this these games into movies. Because the games themselves are kind of movies. are just like play along movies. Yeah. They have like a shit ton of long cut scenes that I typically hate, and but but for whatever reason with with Uncharted, I enjoyed them. Hell, the uh, my PlayStation Four that I bought is a blue PlayStation Four with that's a right. with a photo of Nate Drake on it because. I bought the Uncharted release of the PlayStation. So, like, I like those games. But why'd you make it into a movie? There's no need. The games <laughs> themselves are just playable movies. <laughs> well, it's really weird They to me. did it so but, but that it. people like me who didn't play the games, who but watched, like, just, like, a third of each of them as their his roommates played them while he was... <laughs> and when he happened to be there, they also played them in this hypothetical while he wasn't there, and he missed good chunks of the story. <laughs> uh, that this is movie is made for that person, and he uh, watched it, and uh, yeah, it's okay. I think like I did still know the it's characters, okay. uh, being the two yeah. male leads. Victor Sullivan being the other played by Mark Wahlberg. And honestly, I did not know he was in yeah, this movie. which I told you. Yeah. I told you before, uh, like, when we right after we watched it, that I was dead certain the only reason this movie was made was because somebody wanted Mark Wahlberg to say Uncharted. <laughs> like, they, they were like, that was the only reason. And he never fucking says it. This I was like, you have him right there. It's it's comedy gold. All you gotta do is just get him to say it. Like, <laughs> like all he had to say is it's on an uncharted island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll never find that treasure. It's uncharted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so oh, Victor Sullivan lost opportunity. He uh, goes by Sully, and he loves gold. Yeah, I love gold. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a he's a hunter himself. He's always looking for the next big prize. He he brings in he loops in young Nate Drake because uh, spoilery reasons. We won't we yeah, won't explain it specifically go. why he chooses Nate. Uh, we'll leave that up to to the viewer because I do recommend it. I think it's a fun yeah. little action film. Uh, it's it's absolutely silly. Like if it truly, if you want an action film where you don't have to pay attention, you can just shut your brain off and just have fun. Go ahead. Uh -huh. This this one offers enough thrills. Um, but yeah, he 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 brings in Nate Drake to help him. 
steal whose gold was it was it was Magellan's? Uh right? yes. Well, I mean, he stole it from Technically around the not. world. But yes, it yeah. was on his ships. He did own the ships. But as the movie constantly wants to remind you, remind you, Magellan, even though he gets the credit for being the first man to circumnavigate the world, he didn't circumnavigate That's right. the world. He died in the somewhere Philippines. Somewhere in the Philippines. And yep. somewhere in the Philippines. <clears throat> and it was uh, it was his whatever you call them, first mate who actually did the did the job. And it's just, I don't know. It, it's a it's a factoid you hear in a, in elementary mm-hmm. school and then you just like say it to sound smart. You know, like when somebody's just like who circum who first circumnavigated the world and they're like Magellan it's like <laughs> um actually you know, it was, it, I, it was something I did in, in elementary school, definitely. Yeah. Just to sound smart. And then this movie just makes it like a huge plot point. As I'm watching, I'm just like, okay, I get it. Someone just learned a fact and was just like, oh, actually, and then, I'm and gonna then, make a movie about that. And then Sully says, see, I told you he was smart. See? <laughs> see? <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> But yeah, they team up. They're going to hunt for this uh, for this treasure. They come across uh, another individual hunting for the treasure. Play uh, Chloe Fraser, played by Sophia Ali. She she has worked with Soli before. She does not trust Soli, uh, and she she and Nate, for whatever reason, even though they're in a very untrustworthy business with distrust yeah. trustful people, they. Uh, they they think that they can trust each other, you know. They they see it in their eyes, you know. It's it's true love. So Chloe's trying to pull Nate away from Victor. Victor's trying to keep Nate in his ballpark because Nate's smart and he needs that. <laughs> so you know, it's 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 a it's a weird little triangle, and and Nate is just the the helpless, carefree, loving, care individual. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's just stuck in he the is, center of it all. He, just like, he does I have an innocence. And I don't want to know where my brother's at. Yeah, he has like an innocence compared innocence. to the rest of these characters. Like, he doesn't want to uh, be untrusting to people. He wants to give people a chance. Uh, he, he, and even after yeah. they, they uh, prove to be untrustworthy, he still wants to give them a chance. And. It is an honorable character. He's not corrupted by the system, man. I feel like it's more of a Tom Holland characteristic than a Nate Drake characteristic, though. I, no, Kate, Nate's... I remember him in the games being very considerate still. Mm. And, and like, he might be a little more leery in the games, right. but he's also older in the games. Right, right. This is supposed so. to be Nate's first time out. Uh, besides doing, right. like... Uh, griffs at the bar that he works at and i like i like you know they, they let tom holland be a bit of a bartender at times and he get, getting to do yeah. the whole cocktail uh-huh. uh routine it did feel so that like was that fun. cocktail movie he, he does a good job there yeah I, I feel like it was just like a trait that he did once so like you know they're having like a party after like after work one day and he's like guys look at me i can mix all these drinks and the director's like <gasps> Nate drinks a bartender now. Oh my god! <laughs> I could work this into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So there's another character that's after <laughs> the treasure that I was really surprised was that's in right. this movie was Antonio Banderas. Yeah, I thought he was wrapped up in a Puss in Boots contract, and that was all he could ever do again. <laughs> That's really sorry, unfortunate. Sorry. He's been in, he's been in so many other films. Yeah, I mean, even recently he's been in many other films. I just I haven't seen them. Uh, All I've heard about is the freaking Puss in Boots. Well, he plays Santiago Moncada in this movie, and uh, the Moncada family has been <clears throat> searching for this family for generations, for this for this treasure rather for generations. And right, but his father wants to shut it all down, so that brings up a subplot that involves um Joe Braddock, 
played by Taddy Gabrielle. Oh, shit. I think we mentioned all the very important people now. Yeah, I think that wraps it up there. There's a couple of funny... <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of funny side characters, like this guy who uh, uh, Nate can't understand his Scottish accent. And he's played by Stephen Waddington. But the character's name is literally the Scotsman. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Him and uh, him and Tom meet up a lot and have, have a couple of fun fights. Tommy <laughs> and Nate, that is. Yes. You yes. know how I am. I can't stick to one name. No, no, you can. <laughs> Nobody can. I did enjoy the action more in this one as opposed to as opposed to the Gray Man because the Gray Man's action was, as I mentioned, like quick, edited. Uh, it was you know pretty close to the camera, and and Uncharted is not dissimilar it it very much has a lot of quick edits and everything and there's some really hilarious balloony cgi during moments but it's not bad cgi it's not terrible it's just if you're looking too close at it if you were to pause the if you were pause the the screen you'd start laughing because you can tell that it's not tom holland (laughs) it it looks like a balloon cgi thing (laughs) and like kind of like baloney and it's so funny but i still like the action it seemed more because i cared about the characters yeah, and I cared about the characters too. Yeah, like, yeah, you, you see Nate Drake hanging off of a, a like a bunch of luggage out of an airplane, and he's like trying to climb up the luggage to get back on the to the airplane. And you're kind of like, well, obviously he's not gonna die, but I don't <laughs> want him to fall because I don't want to have that like heart plummeting moment where it's just like, oh fuck, how's he gonna get out oh, of this? Man. You know, it's like that part. When they actually got back to it. So, there's a media stress in this movie. This is what they start the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, When they do get back to the other end of the media stress, that was pretty cool. I have to say. I mean, like, it was bad CGI. It It was was, uh, very much... I know this wasn't a Disney movie, but it's still a Disney-fied formula movie. Yeah. There's still parts that I was like, oh, that was so much fun. Um, but one part that really bothered me was a physics thing. And and I Uh-oh. and I don't know if I'm right or if the movie's right. I didn't look it up or anything. But there's at this one point where they have these big helicopters carrying around ships. There's two of them. Right. And all of a sudden... Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about One this. of the helicopters with the ship being towed under it is in front of the helicopter that Sully is driving and towing the other ship with. And he's like, Oh no. And he goes up super fast. And then he goes down over it. Like he was jumping it on like a a motorcycle or something. But you know, internet, (laughs) you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a helicopter, when you tell it, to go up it stays up i think it <laughs> and, right. and tell you like tell it to go down even but even like even though they can go up like that it's carrying a yeah. fucking ship yeah it wouldn't be able to do it that fast no that's the first problem i wanted it wouldn't the be able other to make ship, a jump like this i wanted the other ship to hit the helicopter blades under it and that yeah. would have worked for the movie yeah. too. That's what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, I thought I thought it. Was, I did not think he would clear it. I thought he would just hit the other fucking helicopter. Yeah, for it's sure. Just, There's no way that it could get dumb. up that fast. But the the part for me was the the way down. It's like why did they think yeah, that yeah. was what would happen? Why did it bounce? Yeah, yeah. Why did it bounce? Yeah. Why did it have to do that? It's really <laughs> it's really silly. I don't understand it. Uh, it, and it, like this movie is not great for. For physics, you know, if you're no. if you're going in for like l- like realistic physics, you're gonna have a very bad time because there's another part uh, that 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 luggage scene we were talking about with the airplane. At, he finally gets to the yeah. you know to the area where like the airplane and the luggage connect, and he like j- makes the final jump. <laughs> I don't know how you're able to do that with all those that force of air right. and everything against you. But he makes the final jump and lands on the platform, and then he stands up and he's all fine. And he's like, whew. Yeah. And I'm just like, wouldn't you get sucked out now? <laughs> yeah. Like, like yes. 
<laughs> but you that's a very thing. You literally just stood up and... before the next bad thing happens, which I'll leave. Right. Because <laughs> that's fun, I think. That yeah, it's true. It is true. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of that. And in, in the video games, too. And it's really hilarious because, like, Uncharted 4 is one of those games that had such like good graphics and everything that you could just shoot the mountainside and watch like pebbles fall down forever yeah and it's like that that was like really cool i remember doing that and being like whoa look at the graphics in this game (laughs) and then like the the physics itself are just dumb as fuck like (laughs) nate drake's doing things that are just impossible for a man (laughs) like him to do but you know it's it's one of those things where you just turn it off and you just have you know have yourself a treasure hunting blast that reminds me of a time where I felt that way about graphics. Like, man, this is so fucking good. And it was Super Smash Brothers Melee. Paused the game, <laughs> went to the bathroom, came back. I was playing Mario, and I'm like, oh, you can see the fabric of his denim, man! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I remember when I was playing Super Mario 64. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Whoa, he's got a hat. It actually looks like it's a hat. He looks like a raccoon. It's a tanuki. <gasps> oh. Oh. Well, all right. Uh, so who wins? Did we, did we rate it, actually? Yeah, I mean. I don't think we rated it. We didn't even close yet. To close on Uncharted, I would say it's a discount natty light. I or, sorry, discount natty treasure. Discount natty treasure. <laughs> National discount treasure. Natty light. What's that? <laughs> like does does uh does Kroger have its own brand beer? <laughs> it's just diet water. Diet water. <laughs> Gross. Oh man. Well, no, it really is. It really is just like National Treasure, but incredibly dumbed down. Like, um, I like, uh, I, don't know. I like Tom Holland. I like the the lady, whoever played Chloe, uh, Sophia Ali. Yeah, she was cool. Mark Wahlberg's hilarious, but <laughs> not in a, I think he's great regard, but more of just like a, you know, he's, he's funny to watch. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's just something about Mark Wahlberg that, like, puts me off, but at the same time, I still like. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of stories. A lot of weird stories in his in his career. <laughs> but but I, I, give it, it. I give it two and a half stars. It's still an entertaining Same rating action romp, turn your brain off blockbuster, you know? Wow. Well, you gave it the same rating as the last, and I gave it the same rating as the last. Yeah. Uh, I definitely enjoyed watching this one. But, yeah, it's nothing really special. Uh, like I said with the last movie, if it had a sequel, I'd watch it. That's And it will definitely probably That's have a true. sequel. Uh, I, I mean, this one really yeah. set it up, too. Um, <clears throat> it made twice as much money as the other film. It sure did. Was was made for. Yeah. That is. <laughs> yeah. Great Man was made for $200 million. <laughs> So, well, there was a lot of practical effects in that one, which I did appreciate. That's true. Yeah. And then they like to zoom in really close to the ca- to the characters so you couldn't see most of those effects. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a there's a there's an airplane fight scene in both movies. There's also bubble there, gum. Yeah, we forgot to mention. We there was like, I was I even kidded yeah. that I was kidded. I even joked that I was going to bring and chew bubble gum through the recording because <laughs> for some reason both Nate Drake and Six have an obsession with bubblegum. It seems that S- the Sierra members were trained with bubblegum somehow. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But it, I mean, honestly, weird. it might just be because, you know, theaters are like, smoking's bad. Let's let's wean smoking out of big movies and let's anybody who we would normally have smoking, let's have them <laughs> chewing bubblegum. <laughs> it's a ploy from big bubblegum. We're gonna, we don't get these kids off the fucking fix, man. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go into hooked up bubble gum. Get a, better get chewing. But but uh, I, I forgot that I was I was saying that uh, both these films have an airplane fight scene. That's right. And the airplane fight scene in Uncharted is way more exciting. It's pretty much like hell yeah, this is gonna be cool. And in 
the gray man uh it's it's uh ryan gosling's character is snuck up on by a bunch of uh soldiers that he thought he could you know he didn't think he could trust them for very long but he was just like hopefully they can get me to where i need to go uh Uh, but then they get orders to turn on to turn on ryan gosling and so they attack him and there's a there's a very good choreographed fight scene the only problem is the camera is zooming in for the entirety (laughs) of like this one really good shot to the point where you end up on like two people's upper bodies as they're fighting and i'm just like why didn't you keep it at a wide shot? I wanted the wide shot. I wanted to see the fighting going on. Yeah. But it was like, it was, I think it was like zooming in on a specific item or something. Like, I think they were about to like grab a weapon off the floor or something. But like, it bothered me. I'm just like, if you're going to do an action film, wide shots. Yeah. Keep it at wide shots. Show me the Show choreography. The choreography. Somebody worked yes, on it. Right. I want to see yeah. it. I'm 100% yeah. with you. <clears throat> so. I think and we so that, closed for all that reason. Movies. I give it. I give the victory to Uncharted. Okay, you give it to Uncharted. Um, I Uncharted. I really thought maybe that you were going to go with the Gray Man until just recently. Uh, I yeah, I think Uncharted is more returnable of a movie for me. I think the only thing that's really drawing me back right. is to watch Chris Evans cut loose like that. It's it's kind of feels like a rarity, and to see his glorious butt. freaking that. This episode has been driving me nuts. It's driving you nuts. It's driving me nuts. That's the pun right there. It's driving me nuts. The Gray Man was close. I almost did give it to the Gray Man because of Chris Evans' butt in those jeans. But <laughs> I gotta give it to yeah. I, I agree with you that Uncharted, Uncharted, Uncharted. <laughs> it's uh, it's just re- it's more returnable mainly yeah. because you just you don't have to put any brain power into it. You can just like cl- click. Yep. Here we go, watching Let's Spider-Man some do some, some crazy CGI like, stuff. Why don't you use your web, Spidey? Come on. Come on, Spidey. Spidey. You dummy. Uh, <laughs> don't have to worry about those freaking luggage things. You can jump over. You could just fucking swing to the next one. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Well, Sorry, Tom he Hall, forgot. Not to he just forgot about it. Typecast you as Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. You know, you did a great job as as uh, Nate Drake. Um, it just, it just still. He's no Nolan North. I'm sorry. I guess you're not <laughs> no Nolan North. So <laughs> let's go to bed. He is let's in this, this too. We didn't, I don't. Yeah, he is. I don't know very, if we talked about I don't that. Think did we talk so. about? I thought we were going to leave it yeah. for for the the viewer, but there is a cameo with the original voice star. It's pretty funny, for sure. It's, it was very obvious that they're trying to be right. like, you might not know who Nolan North is, and you know, or at least not what he looks right. like, because all you've ever done is hear his voice. So we'll make it very blatantly <laughs> obvious that this is the guy. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty obvious. Like Sarah said, it turned to me as like. Is that supposed to be like the guy who did the video game? And I was like, I'm guessing so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I recognize him literally from his voice, right? right? When he greeted Tom, I was just like, oh, that's him. <laughs> it was a silly scene. It was. He gets a cameo. But it was nice. Yeah, it was nice to include him, I think. It was nice. <clears throat> yeah. It's nice to be nice to the nice. Yes, that's right. Is that the well, show? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I am the Green Traveler from Gorsh. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. And I am the faceless Leon Blake. Thank you for coming in. As he said, safe travels and good night. Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of Fiction Works 19. Are you a fan of the show? Feel free to contact us at greenandfacelessfans at gmail.com. Or visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash greenandfaceless. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Or rate us on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for listening.